In today's data log, the project was requested by the United America's Colonial Administration to explore the feasibility of both weaponizing the xenomorph's acidic blood, as well as if it's possible to neutralize or contain it, to determine if it has been done before, and if then when and how it was achieved. The Xenomorph XX121's blood is one particularly deadly aspect of the Xenomorph biology. It holds incredibly fatal and destructive properties, with nearly nothing known that can contain it. The Xenomorph's acidic blood is by far the most devastating and biologically corrosive substance we have encountered since venturing into and establishing the Middle Heavens region. Some have compared such a substance to molecular acid, However, the similarities between the two have yet to be fully studied, as far as we know. So far we know of some colonists successfully containing it, while in Jutani weaponizing one method, and also something that might hold the most promise, the local flora of a far off colony world. But before we get into all that, let's break down each one separately and get a better idea of each and their feasibility for the UAAC's purpose. The first method you could approach to neutralizing the creature's acid is something as equally powerful but an alkaline substance instead. It's basic science that to neutralize an acid, you need to perform what is known as an acid base or acid alkaline reaction. When an acid and a base react chemically, they act to neutralize each other in a process fittingly called a neutralization reaction. The result is a non-corrosive and stable byproduct chemical. This occurs because an acid can release a proton or a hydrogen ion with a positive charge that bonds with a material that it contacts, corroding it away. A base on the other hand is a substance that can donate a hydroxide ion with a negative charge to have a similar effect on a material that it contacts. However, when an acid and a base meet, these positive and negative charges each bonding with the other, leaving behind a neutrally charged chemical in its place. A lot of the time that chemical will be water. In order to completely neutralize an acid as acidic as the Xenomorph XX121s, you would need to have an equally concentrated and powerful base in order to cancel out the acid's electrical charge. Now, while we don't have the exact chemical that would be required to do so, we have seen reports that the exact method that I just described was used to contain Xenomorph XX121, Manumula noxhydria, also known as facehuggers, on the Hadley's Hope colony on the moon LV426. After the Marines aboard the USS Sulaco arrived on LV426 to respond to the Hadley Hope's colonist distress call in 2179, they would eventually discover face hugger specimens within the facility's med bay. Contained within large specimen jars, we know that the noxhydria have the ability to secrete and eject acid from their bodies in order to assist them with reaching a potential host. Something like a pressure suit visor plate, or in this case the glass of a polyresin specimen jar, shouldn't be able to hold up against them expelling acid. So while never proven, it was heavily suggested that the colonists of Hadley's Hope had managed to remove these facehuggers from their fellow colonists uh, that had been attacked, discovered their acidic abilities, and chose to store them within a highly alkaline solution to prevent their escape in the colony where they could do more damage. While this was effective, it only served as a containment strategy for the facehugger, and nothing more. This method is basically useless to contain anything more than a facehugger or as a defense strategy. So far currently, the most effective containment system for the acid would appear to follow the rule of Occam's razor. The fact that sometimes the simplest solution is generally the best. The species Xenomorph XX121 likely hold the key within their own biology and genetics. Xenomorph tissues have the natural ability to resist the powerful effects of their acidic blood, allowing them to use it in their bodies in the first place. Weyland Jutani was known to have used this trait of the Xenomorph XX121's biology. 
in order to produce a new type of deadly chemical weapon. During the year 2140, Weyland Yutani had in their possession a number of xenomorph specimens located on a classified black site somewhere in the middle heavens. Using these specimens in study, they were able to successfully produce a chemical ballistic projectile weapon. Presumably utilizing the tissue of the xenomorph, the company was able to design bullets that tips possessed a casing of xenomorph tissue. And within that, a small packet of acidic blood. There was just enough tissue to contain the acid, but also to allow it to rupture on contact with a target. When fired at a target, not only would the bullet inflict traditional kinetic damage, but the Xenomorph XX121 tissue would rupture on impact and release the acid from within. While the amount within the casing was relatively small, it was still capable of causing massive damage as the acid ate away at anything in the immediate surrounding area of the bullet. The prime example we have of this is when the Weyland Jutani Franklin Combat Synthetics used this unique bullet to wound one Amanda Ripley. Ripley was fired at and received a near miss grazing blow from one of these bullets on her upper arm. Now, what would otherwise have been a slight graze led to massive tissue damage due to the effects of the acid being released onto her flesh rapidly beginning to eat through before it was neutralized over a short period as this wasn't a whole lot of acid. But that being said, even this small amount did a serious amount of damage. Ripley was fortunate that it was only a graze because going off how much damage something like this bullet inflicted on her just from a graze, it's likely that a direct hit from one of these would have resulted in the loss of a limb or even death with little room in there left for survivability. Rumours suggest at one time that following the fall of the USM Auriga, a starship in the year 2381, uh, the newly uh, reformed Weyland Yutani were developing a concept weapon that also utilised xenomorph tissues to produce a weapon that fired the acid at a desired target. However, it seems that this never came to be due to the physical limitations of the technology. The final example we have is that provided by Agent Brooklyn, one of our agents under Operation Vigilance, currently on a research project beyond the 20 parsec limit. This is Agent Brooklyn. My recent ventures to the far-off colony world of Atagena have led to some interesting data. Most research data on the alien species Xenomorph XX121, aka the Xenomorph, has been from closed or restricted environments, e.g. spacecraft, space stations, or small and singular colonial settlements. However, my most recent case study is from the planet Atagena, the word significantly being of Iberian origin, derived from the eponymous continent designated by the known settlers, where a number of poorly armed and weakly defended human settlements were able to successfully counter a significant infestation for nearly seven decades. While much new data was collected, the specimens themselves were imprudently lost through an overly zealous offensive by the native human population. The known settlers of Atagena arrived on a crashed colonization ship, the Nan Shan, 318 years prior to the eradication of the Xeno presence, along with at least four adult specimens at least one of which likely developed into a queen. The only human survivors were 119 children, 10 years and younger. As the civilization that arose during those centuries had achieved roughly a Bronze Age level of technology, combined with massive keeps carved into mountains, despite being driven from the ship with no tools, weapons, references, or anything else of technological merit, along with the presence of northerners from across the oceans of the settler continent. A pre-existing human population is presumed to have resided there for a period of time prior to the arrival of the settlers and xenomorphs. The rulers of each hold were titled Maragrave or Magravine, male and female respectively, designations of Dutch and German origin. 
Despite the infestation and loss of several holds, hidden fortifications among mountainous terrain were able to successfully maintain trade routes between five surviving holds just prior to the anti-xenomorph offensive. Days after the fall of two of these holds, a small force of 3,000 men and women, most not professional soldiers, armed with little more than bows and spears, eliminated approximately 1,000 specimens, and then went on to destroy a queen, a Praetorian guard, and up to 134 new adult drones. The queen was dispatched by three teenagers, the oldest being 19, with the loss of only a single one of them. The settler brigade's one new weapon was a liquid concentration made from an indigenous bush, Caminus, introduced into the Xeno bloodstream. This concentration neutralizes the Xeno's extremely acidic blood, leaving behind a powdery residue. This residue then forms clots in the bloodstream, leading to death after short, indeterminate amounts of time. The northern regions along other landmasses should be immediately surveyed for information and presence of any possible remaining xenomorphs, as well as how the child settlers were able to extirpate the more advanced pre-existing population from the explored landmass, while apparently interbreeding with them. 119 children not providing the sufficient genetic diversity for long-term survival, especially under the hostile circumstances. In combination with the specimens not revealing themselves for 251 years after landing on the planet, this may indicate unknown characteristics of the human settlers worthy of research and exploitation. As the alien infestation was contained and eradicated by primitive humans using archaic weaponry and tactics with sustainable losses, we remain fully confident that a space-borne or terrestrial research and development facility can be designed so as to minimize any loss of life or risk to specimens. With the Caminus project, any facility can also be made acid-proof by embedding the product between plates in critical areas. The settlers called them demons. It is more accurate to call them fallen angels, holding the promise of humanity's salvation. We await your tendered proposals. Given the collected reports from across the middle heavens, and in one case beyond, there exists a number of ways to contain, neutralize, and weaponize the Xenomorph XX121's acidic blood for your purposes. However, from these uh, examples, we can see that a lot more could be achieved uh, than simply weaponizing, such as acidic proofing of facilities, or possibly creating acid proof armor for Marines. We await further direction as to what to do with this data. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like project director Chris Dussinger, company representatives uh, The Sixness, M56 Smart Gunner, and Sith Lord 906, and like team members Raunchy, Ambrosia, The Ryan Smee, and Jack Fleming Jr. I hope to see and hear from you all again very soon. Project Acheron, bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.